Greetings! This is Unit 6, Module 1, Session 5. The name of this home connection is Conrad's Room. It's a two-pager. Put your name and number at the top, please. Let's begin. Our goal is to think about the most efficient strategies for these problems. Uh, and then we're going to show our work, however we need to. You know that I like to draw, so that's probably going to be happening. Conrad is cleaning his room. His bookcase has seven shelves. He put 18 books on each shelf. How many books did Conrad put away? Well, I, I like the idea of just drawing shelves. So here's one shelf, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, those are my bookshelves. Okay, he put 18 books on each. So he put 18 on this one, 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 and on this one. So that looks like you're going to count 18 seven times, aren't you? That's kind of the way I like to think of that when I'm, uh, if I'm going to count a number more than once. So if I have seven shelves, each book has, each shelf has 18 books on it, that's how I'm going to find that number. And of course, you can do this a few different ways. You could say like 18 plus 18 is 36. And then you could say, well, if you double that, you'd have 72, right? You could do it that way. And you could maybe do a little ratio table going down. If you're okay with standard algorithm, then why don't you do that? 18 times 7. Make sure when you do this first number that you carry that 5, okay? Because you're going to take 7 times 8 and get 56. Carry the 5. Then when you take 7 times 1, don't forget to add the 5 when you are done. But that is going to be your answer, right? Uh, Conrad's dresser has six drawers. By the way, you can pause this video anytime you need to. His dresser has six drawers. He put 13 pieces of clothing, clothing in each drawer. How many pieces of clothing did he put away? Once again, I love to draw, so I'm going to draw uh, a, a, a dresser, you know, picture maybe in a bedroom. Maybe you have one, maybe you don't, but I bet you know what a dresser looks like. Sometimes they have knobs in the middle, sometimes they have two knobs on the outside, sometimes they have a bar that you pull on, sometimes they even have that kind of cool little dangly uh, handle thing. But whatever it is, that this is my dresser. Here are my six drawers. 13 pieces of clothing in each drawer. So I've got 13 in this one, 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 in this one. You might be tempted to just add all of those 13s up. That would be great, because basically, what are you doing? You're going to count 13 six times, aren't you? 13 times six. And once again, you could use a ratio table, which would be pretty helpful, um, or you could stack it and do the standard algorithm, or you could even break the numbers apart. You could take this problem right here and turn it into two easier multiplication problems. You could take it 10 times six, and then three times six, that distributive property. How do I know I can do that? Because 13 is made up of 10, and three. And as long as I only change one of the numbers, life is good. So uh, however you want to find your answer, whether you want to um, use a ratio table, whether you want to do uh, the distributive property, maybe you want to do the standard algorithm and just take 13 times six and go that way, that's up to you. But you go for it, okay? Pause this video and find that answer. Conrad has 11 containers for his toys. He put 17 toys in each container. Wow, so this might, might be just a little bit of, uh, of, of a challenging problem. You know what I'm picturing in my brain? I don't know if you have one of these at your house. I think I've had one before, but I'm kind of picturing one of those. Let's see, that would be three, six, nine. I'm kind of picturing those cubes, those kind of open cubes you put baskets in. And here I've got 12 of them. The only thing is, like, maybe there's... Um, I don't know, maybe there's a plant in this one, and maybe there's a little, like, a flower sticking out of it. There's my flower. Okay? But otherwise, I've got um, 11 containers, right? This one's being used. Okay? We're going to put 17 toys in every single one of those 11 containers. Okay? So that means I'm going to count 17 how many times? Well, there's 11 containers, so I'm going to count 17 11 times. If you use your standard algorithm, one thing I'd like to point out, and I'm going to do this with you a little bit, is that if you take 17 times 11, 
we can do that. We're not going to have too many issues here. But when you get to your second row, don't forget your zero. So for example, 1 times 7, what is that? 7. 1 times 1, what is that? 1. That row is done because I took the 1 times the 7 and the 1 times the 1. We're done. Now when I start working with the 1 here, I must start with a zero and then begin. 1 times 7 is 7. 1 times 1 is 1. And now I can add down. 7 plus 0, 7. 1 plus 7, 8. Nothing plus 1, 1. I can, he's going to put 187 toys away. Wow, that's a lot of toys. By the way, any two-digit number times 11, if you want to know secret math, like if you're going to take the number 17 times 11, all you have to do is add the outside numbers and put them together in the middle. Isn't that cool? 1 plus 7 is 8. Write the 8 in the middle. That's the answer. Okay? That's just a little fun secret math for you today. Don't tell anyone. It's secret math. Uh, fill in the blanks. 1 half of 24. A couple different ways you could do that. You could say what's, you could make it friendlier by saying um, half of 20 and half of 4. Right? So that'd be 10 and 2 and then combine them. Maybe you just know half of 24 is 12. Or maybe you want to think of what times 2 is 24. 12 times 2 is 24. There's a couple different ways you can approach these numbers. Okay? Uh, a ruler is sometimes helpful. A number line is sometimes helpful. Uh, but what I want you to think of is this bottom number as almost like a division problem. 1 half of 24 is 24 divided by 2. 24 divided by this denominator. Okay? So that means that one third of 24 is going to be 24 divided by 3. Because what does one third mean? That means you're going to cut 24 into three equal pieces, but only keep one of them. So what is 24 divided by 3? Okay, I'm going to let you figure that out. As you move on to B, one fourth of 24. Well, that's the same as taking 24 and dividing it by 4. Right? Because what is one-fourth of something? That's when you cut it into four pieces, and you want to know how big one piece is. Okay? One-sixth of 24. I'm going to do this one with you. Same thing again. It's the same as 24 divided by 6. One-sixth of something, right? If I take some thing. Let's see if I do this correctly. It should look something like this. Okay, there's my six pieces, right? If I take 24 and I divide it into six equal groups, well, one-sixth of it is going to be one equal part. All of these are the same size, but I only want to know what one of them is. If I divide 24 into six equal pieces, there's four in each group. Can I prove that I'm right? Yes, I can. Take a look at my pie chart up here. If I write a 4 in every single box, and then I add all of them up, that is 24. So 1 sixth, if I cut 24 into 6 equal pieces, there is 4 in each group. Okay? And you can check your math on all of these if you want to by doing a similar situation here. 24, 1 eighth of 24 is the same as 24 divided by 8. Once again, if you want to flip that equation around, you could say um, uh, 8 times what is 24? That answer is going to be the same because all I did was reverse the problem. I changed it from a division problem to a multiplication problem. If I divide 24 into 8 pieces, well, 8 times that number of pieces is still going to give me the 24 that we're looking for. So you might like to do a math fact like this and say 8 times what is 24. Maybe you want to say 24 divided into 8 equal pieces is what, right? And if you want to draw that pie chart, start with your cross and then draw an X, and then you have 8 equal pieces. You're trying to figure out how much one of them would be, okay? Last but not least, 1 12th of 24 is the same as 24 divided by 12. If you divide 24 into 12 equal pieces, like a clock, if you want to think of it like a clock, okay? That would be this and this, and then there's two on each. This goes here, this goes here, this goes here, and this goes here. There's my 12 pieces, okay? You're trying to figure out what one, how many would be in one piece? 
if you're trying to get to a total of 24. If you want to reverse this into a multiplication problem, just switch it. Okay, So that's our original equation. Let's put the big number on this side, and we'd say what times 12 is 24? If you like that math fact better, then use that to find your answer. I would pause this video if you haven't filled those in yet before I move on to this, okay? Because this is slightly different. Uh, well, it's very different <laughs> in how we're going to look at it. Uh, on number five, it's either uh, less than, greater than, or equal. One third and four ninths. Wow, we can't compare those numbers very well. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to make the bottom numbers match. And it's usually better, usually better, to try to make the smaller number um, get to the bigger number. So how do I turn 3 into 9? Well, I'm going to take it times 3. Okay? But if I do that to the bottom number, I have to do the same thing to the top number. So if I take the bottom number and triple it, I'm going to have to triple the top number too. So what do I get if I triple 3? Well, I get 9. That's good. Now the bottom numbers match, and we can compare. And if I triple 1, that's a 3. Now that I have ninths on the bottom, I can now compare them. Which number is bigger, the 3 or the 4? The 4 is, so the alligator is going to eat the bigger number. Okay? 3 ninths is less than 4 ninths. If I look at 7 twelfths this is a, and 4 eighths, this is a little bit different. I have some options here. You could look at this as multiplication or division, uh, but I have to think of a number that I can either multiply both of these t times to get the same answer, or divide them up to get another number. Okay? Now, personally, what I kind of like is I like that they're both even numbers. Uh, but I have a 7 up here, so that's not going to work. So you know what? We'll just, we'll just double. How about we double 12 and we get a 24? Okay? What happens if I double 7? Well, I get a 14. Okay? Can I turn 8 into 24? Yes, I can, because if I take 8 times 3, I get 24. And just like we said before, whatever I do on the bottom, I have to do on the top. So 4 times 3 is 12. So if I want to truly compare these 14 24ths to 12 24ths, the alligator's going to eat the bigger number. One thing you might also think of if you want to use some logic instead of trying to figure out the exact fraction equivalence is you might say to yourself, 4 eighths is 1 half. 4 eighths is a half. Is 7 twelfths greater than a half or less than a half? Well, 6 out of 12 would be a half, right? Half of 12 is 6. So we know that 7 twelfths is larger than a half. So we could use a little logic to say, this is a half, this is more than a half. And I can just say it's greater than just because we know that's true. C, 5 fifteenths, 1 third. Can I turn a 3 into a 15? Yes, I can, by taking it times 5. Okay, And whatever I do on the bottom, I also have to do on the top. So whatever I do to this denominator, I have to do the top. So if I take 3 times 5, I get 15. And if I take 1 times 5, I get 5. Now I can compare 5 fifteenths and 5 fifteenths. Oh, da -na -na -na. I think you know the answer. They look the same to me. 9 twelfths, 2 thirds. Interesting that they put B there, because I think B was the hardest of all of these. But you just, I, once again, I'm going to ask myself the question, can I make the smaller denominator the same as the bigger denominator? In this case, yeah, I can. I can turn 3 into 12 by taking it times 4. But like we said, whatever you do to the denominator, you have to do to the numerator. So if I take 3 times 4, I must take 2 times 4. So I have 12 on the bottom. 2 times 4 is 8. Now I can compare 9 twelfths, 8 twelfths. Whenever the denominators match, you can then compare and decide what's greater than, equal than, what's greater than, less than, or equal. And I'm going to let you write the symbol that you think should go there. The alligator eats the bigger number. Pause this video if you need some time. 
Tina collects cans to recycle at the, the, at the supermarket. Last week on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, she collected 37 cans each day. On Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, she collected 43 cans each day. Tina gets five cents for every can she recycles. How much money did Tina get for her cans last week? So what if we did Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then we just write the answers down. Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, 37 cans. 37 Monday, 37 Wednesday, 37 Thursday. Then it says on Tuesday, Friday, and oh, Saturday and Sunday. Ooh, I missed some days of the week. There's seven days in a week, aren't there? So on Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, she collected 43 cans each day. Okay. How much money did Tina get for cans last week? Well, she's going to get five cents for one can. That's a lot of cans. She's going to get quite a few nickels, isn't she? So we need to figure out how many cans there are. How are you going to do that? Are you going to stack and add it? 37 plus 43 plus 37 plus 37 plus 43 plus 43 plus 43. I mean, that you could make a mistake along the way, couldn't you? Here's my question. How many times, did you hear that? How many times do you count 37? You're going to count 37 three times. So now you have a, now you have a multiplication problem. How many times do you count 43? Hopefully you heard me say times there. We're going to count 43 four times. 43 four times. If you do your standard algorithm for both, you should be able to add both of these answers, and then we'll know a little bit more. So the only issue here is I, I'm going to give you an opportunity to answer the rest of this question, but let me point out what I think is going to happen. I think whether, which, whichever method you choose, I'm afraid that you're going to stop there because you're going to figure out the total cans, like this answer, when you add these two numbers together, whatever you have here and whatever you have here, when you add them together, that is going to be the total number of cans that she collected that week. But the problem says Tina gets five cents for every can, how much money did she get? So whatever you get, your total number of cans, you're going to have to figure out how much money that is. That's one nickel for every can. And let me give you an example. Let's say she had 11 cans. Okay, If you want to figure out how many nickels she's going to have, that'd be 11 nickels, 5 cents, 5 times 1 is 5, 5 times 1 is 5, that's 55 cents. So you can use the symbol there, or if you want to, you can write C-E-N-T-S. The problem is, is when you get over 100 cents, you're going to be talking dollars. So if you had an answer like um, 1,039 cents, well, that's actually $10.00. And 39 cents, isn't it? Because 1,000 pennies is $10, and you'd have 39 cents left. So when you look at this number, you have to be careful. Either answer it in cents, or if you're going to use dollars, you're going to have to convert it a little bit. Okay? That is a deep, deep problem. And if you want to ask for help, please do. Tina kept five bucks for herself. She divided the rest of the money evenly among her three little brothers. So now you have to take the answer from the last problem. You're going to subtract $5 from it, okay? Which, by the way, is 500 cents, okay, in case you want to know. After you do that, whatever that new answer is, It says you're going to divide the rest evenly among her three little brothers. So that new answer, you're going to divide by three. That is going to be a tough problem, y'all. Not that you can't do it, but you're going to have to make some decisions. You have to make sure that you subtract from the answer. Step one, subtract $5 from it. And whatever that amount is that's left, after you've taken five bucks out, 
you've got to divide it into three equal groups. And if you are really comfy doing the long division, you can, or you can use any of the methods that we have discussed um, in this unit. All right? I look forward to seeing how this goes. Okay? If you need help, make sure you ask for help. We love uh, to help people with math questions. Otherwise, we'll check you later.